Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, today's video, we are going to start the uh, Chopin ballad number three. So to continue with the whole theories of uh, all Chopin ballad, now we have reached the middle point. But actually, um, the number one, number four really are much harder musically and technically compare to number three and number two. So I'm already like 70% done, I think. But however, um, number three still has its own characteristics. Um, and there are two things I think are the most important um, in playing this successfully. Um, number one is the use of tempo rubato. Um, I know we've talked about it a lot in the other ballads, also in the etudes. But somehow, the opening of this one, um, it's something, if you don't use rubato, it just sounds not like Chopin. Yeah, it sounds wrong. Um, so um, we're going to talk about that a lot in this uh, series. And the other one, uh, rarely I hear uh, people talking about, but that is how you have to connect a long melodic line, even though there are breaks in between, okay? So to give you an example in this piece, um, the second scene, we all know the melody goes yeah? So some, sometimes I might even appear in our head because of the pedal. However, for people who learn this, there is a rest in between. So you have to somehow still connect them even though there is a rest in between. Um, and also the beginning from major nine. Yeah, so we have a chromatically descending figure. Yeah. But it was interrupted by these. But still in our head, we have to somehow find a way to connect them. All right, now let's talk about the beginning and the use of rubato. Um, first of all, tempo rubato really uh, means, the, the literally translation from Italian is to rob, to steal. Yeah, there is a whole book about tempo rubato called Stolen Time by Tassen. Uh, that I really enjoyed reading very much. It talks about the whole history, yeah, from from Baroque um, until until recent. So rubato really has two ends. You can't just slow down, or you cannot just to speed up. You have to do both. Okay, so almost like a very good analogy was you almost like you you borrow money and I have to return the money and the money in this case is the time, so we can never uh, do it uh, only to slow you down. Yeah, slow you down is called ritornuto. So if I try to play this exactly in time, it will sound like. never in my life heard people playing like this. Maybe because I'm lucky, but it is just the wrong way to approach this, okay? Um, I would start this with a little bit slower tempo and then push it when the notes are more active, yeah? M more uh, eighth notes, and then slow down a little bit with that chordal ending. So it will sound like... So clearly, this tempo and is different. But then probably if you add them up, it's the same as to measure how you count it. Yeah, it 
if you are um, if you heard this clip, I, I can't find it right now, but I'm sure I've heard uh, I've seen it somewhere. Um, Rubinstein talking about Rubato and how I, I don't think it was the third ballad, but maybe he was showing a Bakuro or something by Chopin. Um, but it was so wonderful to see him. He was saying, he was saying after this moment, let's just say he was talking about this. Yeah, you have to expect something. Yeah, and that takes time. And that really fills up with timing. Okay, <clears throat> I, I really highly recommend people watching that because that gives inspired me so much um the other thing about this opening is that um uh, yes it sounds like chopin right it's it has melodies but it's the texture of it, it really is a chorale yeah four voices singing however um chopin really did a wonderful job introducing each voice so beginning is the soprano right a voice <laughs> And then this is the tenor range, although it's the bass in this case. Yeah. Now it's the duet between the tenor or the alto with the bass. And then the soprano concludes. Yeah, question and answer. And here, yeah, very, very peculiar uh, that Chopin puts a diminuendo on one note. What does he mean? How can we do that? It's impossible to do that because even if he didn't mark it, we still need, we, I mean, if you hold it, it's still a, uh, a diminuendo. But probably he wanted that note to disappear sooner, okay? If you're familiar with this wonderful video of Christian Zimmerman playing all four ballads, he does this. Yeah, he just leaves the key right away. And I totally un uh, agree. And, and the, the sound effect is wonderful. Um, really, what Chopin meant maybe is a ringing sound. Yeah, it's not deep like that, but. Yeah? And when we provide or produce ringing sound, one thing is often neglected, that is voicing. Because if we voice the lower note or both, we can't have that ringing sound. It has to be the top. So the way I do it, I put my fourth finger on top with my pinky, and my thumb will leave the key immediately after. So like that. And then the uh, attack is quick, not ugly, but quick attack. Okay, um, and here, body, body. These are all sigh. Yeah, two notes there. The first one more, second one, but still connect them in your head even with this interruption of the bell. moment makes me uh, smile because Chopin cannot resist to use counterpoint or to use polyphony yeah so this or now becomes a separate melody while the left hand sighing continues
know Chopin put a long crescendo, but I still think within each phrase, we cannot we cannot play too much towards the end, okay? Because Chopin put a staccato, yeah. I don't think he meant short. Maybe he meant a soft ending, yeah. But of course, the whole tendency is to grow. And of course, what significantly here is that you go in to, yeah, it's almost like you, you go into major. And, but also, something hidden in the left hand. Um, before we have a drop of minor second or drop of uh, half steps here in major 29 yeah it's a rising minor second Okay, and of course the opening comes back, um, and we have a sequence leading us to the climax of this part. Significantly, here the crescendo continued towards the chordal section. So, yeah, that's the climax, and for it backed off here. That's different with the opening because the opening, the crescendo breaked, yeah, they stopped before this one. So, I've heard so many students confused about these either they do both going down, and uh, that's usually the case, yeah. they go up, or, or here, sometimes I hear people yeah, backing off too early. So really, we have to keep that in mind, the beginning, this is almost a reaction of the beginning uh, part. But this one is a result. That's the reaction. And here I would voice the lower, and this chord I would voice the top. So you have yeah, a very spacious feeling before we reach the second scene. Okay, um, this is the first episode and I think I will spend less episode on the these two ballads that left. Um, thank you for watching and again if you're currently working on this you're welcome to ask questions or even send me your videos of playing these. Um, and give me suggestions on what to do next because after the summer I will finish this big project of all shopping ballads. Thank you for watching. See you next week. <laughs>